He was distant until my son came now. He picks him up all the time, sneaks in the room in the middle of the night, steals underwear. What should I do when someone I suspect is living under the same roof? I'm a 33-year-old single mother living on a waitress salary. Times are tough right now, and due to unforeseen circumstances, I've had to move in with my sister for the past couple months. It's not an ideal situation, but I'm doing my best. I have an ex-husband, 40 male, who is emotionally abusive, hence the divorce. We share custody of my incredible son, let's call him Roman, 13, who has been so understanding of our financial situation, even at his age. I love him more than I love myself. He is kind and intelligent. He stole my ex-husband's face, unfortunately, so he's beautiful. Every mama will say their son is beautiful, but my kid really is stunningly gorgeous. The amount of adults my age and older who have given him the creepy and unwarranted he's going to be a heartbreaker in a few years comments would alarm you. He has a DHD but maintains decent grades. He plays a sport and is good at it. He's got lots of friends who he visits often and vice versa. Despite the changes in our living situation, he is thriving and I'd do anything to keep that up. My sister, let's call her Sarah, 42, and her boyfriend, let's call him David, 44, are well off and live in a massive house. My sister was happy to take me in, but her boyfriend David, not so much, which I completely understand. I offered to pay rent, but my sister won't have any of it, so I do chores around the house and cook as often as my work schedule will let me. I never saw much of David anyway. He was often at the bar with his friends or working or locked in his room playing video games. When we did see each other, he acted like I didn't exist. My son Roman was staying with his dad for a while as I was figuring things out and I was worried about David's attitude once my son moved in with us. I talked to David and promised him that Roman would be respectful and well-behaved, but he was weird about it and shrugged me off. Then David met Roman David is absolutely fascinated with my kid. His disposition changed so quickly that it gave me whiplash. Suddenly, he stopped locking himself in his room and has decided to spend time with us, well, mostly my son. He helps Roman with his homework. He watches all of Roman's favorite shows so that they can talk about them together. He buys him food and gifts. My sister Sarah is over the moon. She's been telling me about how us moving in has been the best thing for their relationship because David is happier now. I thought it was sweet at first, but in the back of my head, I think something more nefarious could be going on. To paint a clearer picture, I've noted some other changes I've noticed that I can't decide whether they're innocent or not. David texts my son often, which wouldn't be weird, except he does it while he's at school. The texts themselves aren't weird at all, but David lightly scolds him for not replying sometimes. Before my son moved in, David was rarely ever home during the afternoon evenings. He'd stay out after work and go drinking with his buddies until late at night, a habit he's had for years according to my sister. Now he's home all the time. He gets home before Roman gets off the bus, around 3.15 p.m. if he's not at practice, and stays home all day. Even offering to babysit while I'm working through the evening, he still drinks, just in the house. Last Wednesday, I woke up to use the bathroom during the middle of the night. To get to the bathroom, you have to pass by my son's room. I was surprised to see that the door was closed all the way, since Roman always likes it open because his room gets hot at night. Also, he has been staying up late texting his friends lately, which has caused him to sleep through his alarm and miss the bus some days. So that night, I opened the door to let the air in and he was asleep, and there was David standing by Roman's bed, in the dark. He stated that he was looking for his cell phone but I saw him jump with anxiety when I opened the door. He left quickly, muttering something about how it might be in the kitchen. Why would his phone be in my son's room, and why was the door closed? David offers to drive my son everywhere he needs to go. Only him. School, if he misses the bus, practice his friend's houses. This is the same man who wouldn't lift a finger for me until my son moved in. It's been incredibly helpful since I'm not home often but a part of me wonders if he's doing it for the wrong reasons. I caught David doing Roman's laundry, resulting in a few articles of clothing going missing. This one irritated me because I made my son do his own laundry. I asked him not to do this, but his excuse is that he is trying to save water. I don't know how to fight him on this since it's his house. I am terrified to bring this up to my sister. Am I reading into things too much? Am I silly for worrying that he might have ulterior motives? If I tell my sister and she gets angry and there's nothing going on, she'll kick us out and we'll be homeless. Update one hi all. First, I want to thank you all for your responses and suggestions. I am so overwhelmed by the replies and was unable to read them all, but I'm glad and terrified to see that I'm not going crazy, that there is something wrong. I also want to thank those who shared their experiences with being groomed, washed, sexually assaulted, as it opened my eyes to a lot of things. Second, I'd like to clarify a few things. I did not let my child in David's car after the bedroom incident. I would never do that. After this occurrence tied with the laundry situation, I began to take note of David's behavior which was when I started putting the pieces together. I came to read it shortly after, and here we are, unfortunately. Third, I'd like to address a couple questions I've seen. David is not on any sex offender registry. By saving water, David meant that he combines loads of laundry, meaning that he'll do his laundry and Roman's laundry in the same load. 
The laundry that I've seen go missing are mostly socks, which is typical, even when Roman was doing his own laundry. But then, Roman told me that he was missing a couple shirts and a pair of underwear. That alarmed me since this only happened once David started doing his laundry. Massive red flag. The texts are really innocent. David asking him what he wants for dinner, what time he should pick him up discussing shows they've been watching. But based on his other behavior, it's clearly a grooming tactic and I'll be sure that it stops immediately. No way in hell should he be texting my kid at school. The bedroom situation, in clearer detail, I peeked in to make sure that Roman was asleep and David was at the foot of his bed. The room was of course pitch black and I was groggy as hell, so I didn't even register that it was him until he pushed past me to leave. I checked on my son afterwards. He was still asleep and the blankets were fully over him. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary, but maybe I just intervened at the right moment. I made sure his door was open and I left my door open as well so I could listen for any footsteps. I could not sleep after that happened. It wasn't sitting right with me. None of these are excuses. Like I said, eyes are wide open now. Fourth, I'll discuss everything with my son tonight once I get off work. A lot of you said it was a good idea and I was already planning on doing it. He has not been acting strange in any way and is his usual happy self but that doesn't mean that David hasn't done anything yet. That reality is terrifying to me and I pray that's not the case. I pretty much have a clear idea on what to say to him but I am not sure if I should explicitly tell him that I found David in his room or that he might be stealing his clothing. Any suggestions on how to go about this conversation are welcome. Fifth, I fully plan to confront David and talk to my sister Sarah about this. I am not a doormat, and I will do anything to keep my son safe. David is on a church retreat and thankfully has not been home for a few days. I've decided to speak with my sister first, in case David twists my words or manipulates her into believing that nothing is wrong. And once he returns, I'll confront him based on how my sister reacts. Any other suggestions on how to go about it are welcome as well. Six. I've read your suggestions about setting up cameras, checking for cameras, drug testing my son, and finding his missing articles of clothing. I plan on buying cameras and drug testing him once we have a conversation. I did look for cameras and found nothing, but I'll look again. I am terrified of what I might see if I end up finding Roman's missing clothing, but I know it's just a reality that I have to face, that people can be so disgustingly lastly. I know I need to get out of this house. I know that. I'm working on it. If I could pack everything up tonight and do it, I would. I'd send him to live with my ex-husband, but he's abusive toward my son and me, more so toward me, but still. I've considered your suggestions about looking into homeless shelters, and I'm leaning toward making arrangements for that. After I confront David, I'm a good mom, but I know I'm not the best mom. This past week has been hell. I should have intervened earlier. I regret that. Thank you for listening. I'll update once I follow through with my plans. Update 2, hi all. This is my second update. My first post got removed, but you can find it. Apparently, it made its way to TikTok and Instagram, which I'm not sure how to feel about, but it's too late to take back now. In the past four days, I spoke with my sister Sarah, her boyfriend David, and my son Roman, all separately. One went well, two didn't. I have a lot to get off my chest, so this might be long. There's a tolder at the bottom. My first conversation was with my son, which occurred the night I posted my first update. In fear of this post getting removed like my first one, I'll have to censor myself. But I think you'll understand what I'm referring to when I say that I asked my son the serious and explicit questions. Roman adamantly denied that David ever did anything to him. He seemed surprised that I asked. He said he would have told me if he had. I believe him. I know he could be lying, but I'm trying to take his word for it. My son and I have a very open and transparent relationship. The first time my ex-husband ever verbally abused him, he came straight to me and told me about it. My guard is up, but I have to give him the benefit of the doubt. Like you all advised me, I didn't bring up the bedroom or laundry situation, but I was honest with him and told him that David's behavior toward him was inappropriate. We had to talk about boundaries, saying no consent, etc. I drilled into him that David is not to drive him anywhere, text him anymore and be around him alone under any circumstances. I also explained what grooming is and that it's what David has been doing to him. He said he knew about it through a school assembly. Then he said something that broke my heart. He apologized for letting David treat him that way, that he shouldn't have fallen for it, his exact words. I assured him that none of it was his fault. I want to make it clear that David is not preying on him because of how he looks or how he acts. He is doing it because he is a predator and they prey on the vulnerable. Honestly, I could tell that the conversation had left him a little shell shocked. To know that the person you liked and trusted isn't who you thought he was would leave any kid rattled. For the entire rest of the night, he followed me around like a lost puppy. It did break my heart a little to see him like that. But I don't want him to feel a false sense of security around David so I have no regrets about it. Sarah was next. I knew it would turn into an argument before the conversation even began. It's always been that way with her. My sister is nice, but not kind. She'll take you off the street, but then throw it back in your face if you cross her. So I knew what I was getting into, but I had to do it not only for my kid's sake, but for hers. This is not a man I want her to be with, have children with, nor do I want him in our family. I told her that I was uncomfortable with the way David acts around Roman, and that I think it's a lot deeper than what he portrays it to be. I mentioned that I didn't like the gift-giving and the constant texting, 
and I brought up the bedroom and laundry incidents. Like I predicted, she was more offended that I was accusing her boyfriend of grooming my son. She didn't see how that was proof of anything. Do you know how many socks and pairs of underwear I've lost while doing laundry? It's probably stuck somewhere in the dryer. The more I expressed my concerns, the more defensive she got. She thinks I'm manic, essentially. She said that as soon as things get good for me, roof over my head, food in the fridge, a steady job, I intentionally screw it up because deep down I don't think I deserve happiness. She tries to help me every time, but I end up stabbing her in the back like I am right now. So, she doesn't believe me. That's her prerogative. Fine. I told her that I won't be staying at her house much longer, and that I don't want David around my kid anymore, that we'll be keeping to ourselves for the rest of my short time here. She's letting me stay, surprisingly, but she said she's glad to see me go. She swore up and down that David would never hurt Roman, and that she was sad to see their relationship ruined over an accusation with no real basis. That I shouldn't let my self-destructive behavior and my bipolar paranoia get in the way of other people's happiness. And that I better not accuse her boyfriend of being a predator anymore. Essentially, she kept shift shifting the blame onto me, so I ended it there. Oh, and she told me that she wants reimbursement for things like clothing and grocery shopping because apparently we are draining her wallet by buying so much food. Yes, an eighth grader going through a growth spurt eats a lot. Shocker. But I apologized and said I'd buy his and my groceries from now on. David came back from his church retreat Friday morning, which is when I confronted him. I was very upset, so I didn't go easy on him. He was thrown off by my hostility, but once he understood what I was implying, his demeanor shifted. Sit down, sit down, let's talk about it, he kept saying, except he was the one who was nervous and looked like he was on the brink of a panic attack. I kept my composure. I asked him why he was in my son's room in the middle of the night with the door shut. He gave me the same excuse that he was looking for his cell phone. I asked him why he couldn't have gone for it in the morning. He said that he set the alarm to 5 a.m. for work and that he didn't want it to go off my son in the room and wake him up. I asked him why he was standing over my son's bed. He admitted that he was trying to wake him up and ask him if he'd seen his phone. Did he not just say that he didn't want the alarm to wake him up? I asked him what on earth would compel him to think it is okay to wake up my child in the middle of the night to help him look for a cell phone. He said he wasn't thinking straight and that he was sorry. I asked him about the missing laundry as well. He adamantly denied what I was implying. He said that his and my sister's clothing get lost in the laundry all the time, that he would help me find my son's missing clothing, all while apologizing profusely. I'll admit, I was thrown off by how apologetic he was and it made me a little soft. I thanked him for letting us stay in his house, and I apologized for not setting boundaries earlier, but I told him that from now on, I didn't feel comfortable with him being around my son, no more driving him places, buying him gifts, texting him, helping him with homework, doing his laundry, etc. I essentially told him that he is no longer allowed to be alone with my son or touch his things under any circumstances. He broke down in tears. He was hysterical. The thought of me believing that he is preying on my son made him miserable, that he'd never do that. He said, I love him like a father loves a son. When reading my original post, a lot of you believed the same thing at first. So did I, but I just don't like the way David looks at him. Yes, I see the kindness in his eyes toward my son as he helps him with homework or watches a show with him, but there is a nuance of something covetous and sinister that I can't shake off. Anyway, I told him that it's unhealthy for him to be so fixated on a child and that he cannot depend on my kid for happiness. I told him that we'd be leaving very soon, more on that later. I didn't tell him where or when it was happening. He asked if there was anything he could do to rectify the situation. He suggested that the four of us sit down and talk about it. I declined. I reiterated that he is not allowed near my kid anymore and left it at that. A small part of me feels like I was too harsh on him overall. Maybe he was just looking for his phone. Maybe it's a coincidence that articles of clothing are missing. But he was on his knees, sobbing like I had just pulled the rug out from underneath him. For a child he hasn't known for that long, I don't think he was devastated that I'd accused him of being a predator. He was devastated that I revoked his access to my child. I'm not stupid. I once witnessed this man argue with my sister brutal verbal assaults from both sides which ended in my sister crying. He didn't shed a tear. For my peace of mind and yours, I have been watching Roman like a hawk. When I'm home, he's with me. When I'm not home, he's at a trusted friend's house or again with me. I actually took him to work with me this morning, which he wasn't thrilled about, but whatever. I made him block David's number, of course. We haven't been in the house since Friday, but as some of you suggested, I will sleep in his room at night instead of making him sleep in my room. I'll be honest, I decided to hold off on drug testing him because I really do not think David has been drugging him. My son is naturally a heavy sleeper and has always had issues waking up for school, even before we moved into my sister's house. I checked his text messages and from what I've seen, he's never texted David at night. He's usually up texting his friends in a group chat. Like you all suggested, I purchased a nanny cam, specifically the one where you can watch the footage on your smartphone. I wasn't expecting it to be so pricey. I ordered them on Wednesday and they are due to arrive tonight or Monday morning. I'll put it in my son's room and review it every day. I'm really nervous because there's a possibility that I'll see something odious and I don't know if I can handle that. 
lots of you have voiced your concerns for my kid. From what I've seen and from what he's told me he's doing fine, we have been staying at a hotel for the weekend, now that David has returned from his church retreat. I wasn't taking any chances, $56 a night and a little sketchy, but I don't want to complain. Again, despite the situation, his mood has been a lot better than mine has. He thinks a motel is the same as a hotel, so to him, it's like we're on a mini vacation. It's mind-blowing how kids can be so resilient even in the most unnerving situations. The majority of you have told me to go to a women's shelter. I looked into this, and while it's an option, the closest one to where I live is more than an hour away. I don't have a car. I can take the bus, my usual mode of transportation, but that disrupts his commute to school and my commute to work. It's still winter and freezing cold where I live, so I'd rather watch him like a hawk than live on the street and subject him to the cold weather. And I'm not taking him back to my ex-husband's house. There's a reason why he left and why I divorced him, which brings me to some good news. I applied for public housing a long while back and I'm in the process of getting approved. They contacted me for documentation, which I submitted, and I got verified. So I think that's a good sign. I'm very fortunate, since I know wait lists can be long sometimes. I can't believe I'm holding it together so well, but I'm proud of myself. I think I'm doing everything I can. Thank you for listening. I'll update again shortly with hopefully better news. Told her, currently at a motel after confronting sister and her boyfriend. Reactions were brutal. Son is safe and nothing bad has happened to him. Camera has been purchased and will be set up and reviewed daily once I return, and a deep search of David's room will be conducted once I get the opportunity. Currently getting approved for public housing, which will be my ticket out. Edit this goes without saying, but I will of course talk to my son before putting a camera in his room. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more shocking real-life stories happening around you.